As far as disposition goes, we haven't seen seen the negative. Um, you know, I, I think maybe some of that is the breeding, um, where we're just kind of the old school Angus breeding, um, and most of them are pretty laid back type type of animal, just in their demeanor. So we haven't seen a negative. I could see where, where you know, where some people were coming from if if you're not an animal at all and they haven't seen a human, um, where there could be a negative. We haven't seen that, I guess. That's worked out good. Um, it's a lot less labor intensive. The weather's been nicer and I'm calving them out on grass. So I have a whole lot less issues with the, the sickness and the scours. Now with the May calving, I basically check my cows in the morning and in the evening. So the daytime, I, I get my farming done. I, I have switched to no-till farming. So that has really eased up the amount of pressure too that a person used to spend working in the fields. So it's just basically a matter of, of getting the fields sprayed and, and seeded. Uh, I don't have to worry about working them. And so in the morning I'll go out and I check my cows and tag the new ones, write them in the book, I ban the bulls, and same thing late afternoon, I'll do the same thing. And that's basically about the only time I, I check the cows. Sometimes if the weather's a little wet, rainy, I'll do in the middle of the day as well, but I haven't checked cows at night for probably eight years. <laughs> you know, the calving probably period is one of the easiest physical periods that I have, just for the fact that all I'm really doing is just overseeing what's going on and uh, tagging calves in the morning or in the evenings and the cows are performing what a cow is supposed to do. Uh, finding her own secluded place to have a calf, um, bonding with that calf right away, not getting it lost or mixed in the herd, um, getting that first nutrition, getting that clostrum into them right away and uh, setting themselves up for a healthy, full healthy life. So Earlier, maybe we had more death losses. Not a lot. We were, you know, I, I felt I did a really good job and death loss wasn't an issue um, because I used a lot of labor to protect them. Um, and since it was my own labor, I wasn't paying somebody. So it, there wasn't a change in dollars <laughs> for labor from going to a March and April to a May and June because I wasn't hiring anybody to do it anyway. Um, but in the aspect of healthier calves, that's probably where if there was more revenue generated, it was because the calves that were sold were all, are at this point in time, are as a whole healthier than the ones that maybe had been sick when they were born sick during the first few weeks of life or something like that. Even though we calve in May and June, we wean at about 210 days. That's probably an average, average weaning age for calves. For us, that falls between some place between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, that works out well if I'm going into the feedlot um, because now I've probably avoided the dust and I've and probably don't have any mud either. Either one of those, um, they're they're froze up. I'd really like to have a snow cover on it when when we do wean, but we wean. Then we go into it's a traditional um, probably 45 day preconditioning period. So those calves after they're they're weaned, um, we start them on a ration before they're weaned. The same ration they're going to have in the feedlot. Their mothers and them and <clears throat> get that ration probably for at least two weeks ahead of, ahead of time. So when we wean, their ration is the same thing that they've been on. There's no change to that. Um, so we don't have upsets there. So within 45 days, we have a calf that's totally forgot about mom, has been on a ration from, from day one. So anytime after 45 days, which is going to put us into end of January, first part of February, something, they are ready to go. That one thing that people miss out on is that very first meal for that calf, that most important meal of their whole life. That's that claustrum meal that they get. 
and you want to get that in there two hours or maybe four hours after they've born. And basically the situation is that sets up their whole life. Um, if you mess that up from your management or allow the cow to lose her way, um, you're going to pay the price. So that's why we like to have that cow by herself. We like her to bond right away. We like her to have high quality colostrum and you get that by watching your nutrition. Um, you want to get that into that calf before it ever has a chance to cool down and then you're set, set for life. I think a lot of it is the stress factor. Um, when my dad would calve his heifers in February, his threes in March and his cows in April, he never noticed a difference between the size of the calf on the weaning date. A lot of that we thought maybe was just that they were younger, you know, the earlier calves were off younger cows. But as we started backing the heifers and the threes into when the cows started, the weaning weights never changed anyway. We've always attributed it to less stress, better health, the fact that, you know, that calf gets up, he gets his first shot of colostrum when he's 20 minutes old instead of two or three hours old. He's on grass. He's just got a lot less stress all the way around. Birth of a calf and the first few hours after birth, the most dangerous time in a calf's life by far. <clears throat> and I could go into all the details of that, but the calf has to be vigorous enough to get up and nurse, and the cow has to be of the her uh, teat distribution or size and utter conformation, all that. We don't even think about that probably most of the time, but that has a lot to do with that calf's survival. And it has a lot to do with its health throughout its life actually, but certainly for the first till it's an adult. And so those things, uh, Anything we can do to make that calf healthy, stay healthy, and the cow do her part. That's, that's what we're looking for. Water is like wealth. You're only as rich as the amount you get to keep. And the same thing was true of our calves. You know, the calves are our source of wealth. They eat, the cows eat the grass, they produce the calves. And we're only really as well, uh, wealthy as the calves that we keep healthy and keep alive and are able to, to market. So that's our philosophy. Uh, we know that we depend on the land. We know that the health of the land is how healthy we are, we're gonna be wealth-wise and, and just physically-wise as well. And since we calve in May, it's, uh, uh, the, the, if we were to be weaning in October, our calves would be younger. And uh, October is a tough month to wean in a dry year. There's a lot of dust. And, and uh, nowadays, we, we wean on a fence line, cows on one side out in the pasture, calves on the other. We rarely have sick calves. I'm not saying we don't, because we do once in a while. but. Uh, in January and, or February on snow, a little bit of snow, um, there, there's never dust. You know, we have very little, little illness with calves. I think stress is a huge thing in health and keeping their, um, their immune system strong, lowering the stress. Then a year later, we moved a little bit later yet in May, so where we didn't even calve until about the 20th, 25th of May. And we feel, felt that that was just too late. We, we got too much into the hot season on the backside where we started running up against the 1st of July. And we can start to see some scours if we get too late in the summer where it's really hot as well. So we're, we're trying to hit that, you know, we probably have our first calf right around the 1st of May, but we don't start in earnest till uh, about the 7th or 8th. And that's worked really well for us for the last couple of years, just because it strikes that balance between getting the cows to the summer pasture, minimizing our handling of those calves, minimizing our, our feeding in the winter. Last year, we didn't even tag them. We just said, you know what? It's a calf and I'm not, I don't need to know the genetic material of that calf, who its mother is. I'll probably figure it out by the end of the year anyway. Um, <clears throat> by not tagging them, by not handling them, 
there's just no stress there. For the calf, for us, we aren't getting cows trying to run us over. We aren't dealing with that. Um, and it just, it's a lot easier on everyone. And if you're not pulling that calf out of the mud. So for somebody to say, well, you know, I don't want a calf in May and June because I'll be putting up hay or I'll be planting corn or I'll be doing whatever. Well, you can still do all those things if that's what you want to do. Because um, the cows, they know how to calve. They know who their calves are. They don't have to have a tag in their ear. And so we, we quit tagging our calves too is until the first time we touch them, which is usually uh, the end of September. And then we'll just put a, an identification tag in each calf at that time. If you're calving March, April, you're, you're focused on, well, you gotta keep the calf warm. That, that's the big focus, which is absolutely opposite in, in May calving is you, you run into situations where you got to keep the calf cool. Of You run into years when um, you have wet conditions, your grass is rapidly growing, and you'll hit them, you know, even in May and June, you'll hit the days of high temperatures, high humidity, and the grass is tall, and if that cow has a calf in there, it'll, it'll get them because it just gets too hot down there. And so you got to just do the opposite thing. Maybe you got to put the calf, do the kind of the same thing. You got to put the calf in the barn so he has some shade instead of, <laughs> instead of trying to keep him warm. <laughs> People don't realize if you take a, and watch your calves, you know, a March born calf will be, by the time it's a month old, is already eating hay. Well, um, there ain't much nutrition in that hay you're feeding the cow, but that same calf will be eating grass. So you want really good resources of grass because people don't realize how much grass a baby calf will eat. And so you want a really high, so they got a good high plane of nutrition. Okay. We go to, um Minute the calf hits the ground, when we stick a tag in his ear, if it's a steer bull calf, we make him steer immediately. That's due to moving. Calves get, on the average, two, three weeks before we're going to move them to heal up. Calves travel better, but we do stick an iron on them, give them shots, do all that. I mean, it, it's pretty, yeah, a lot of that's never changed. I'm not picking on anybody calving in February, March, whatever you want to do, that's your deal. But you might have a pretty good calf and got him through um, first of March, had some sickness in that calf or something like that, and all of a sudden, that August, hot, that shows the lungs in that calf. I mean, that calf, you might have you got him to survive and got him to grow, but the first time it hits Lyman County in July and we get some bad heat, that calf might start going plain and down. My calves keep going up. I mean, and them little calves seem like the whole handle the heat good, if, if you're good to your grass. If you chew the shit out of it, no, calf, they'll get too hot, 